What's up ladies and gentlemen, no zoop for you here, and I feel like I've been gone an eternity, even though I haven't. For those of you who didn't know, I've been at the Almost Heaven Star Party in Spruce Knob, West Virginia. This is an annual thing I go to where I'm actually the co-chair for an event that hosts 250 amateur and professional astronomers. Some of the smartest people in the world come to this event, and I absolutely love it. And apologies right now for my voice, it's a little rough. I've been yelling through a mega horn for about five days trying to give updates to people out in the field and elsewhere, so my voice is a little raw, but that's okay, it's for a good reason. I got some beautiful photos, got some beautiful deep space images. This is M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Yes, I shot this image while I was there. Just a great time, and I'm really happy how this turned out. And really uh, being away from warships and allowing me to do this has kind of given me inspiration to start another channel. So if some of you all love astronomy or some of you all aspire to take photos like this of deep space objects or even the Milky Way in general, my new channel is Astro Zoop. I'll put the link at the end of this video. Please check it out. Please subscribe if you love astronomy because that is kind of a second passion of mine outside of World of Warships. But back to World of Warships, back to the grind, back to ships, and I, I did miss it, I really did. Today we're going to talk about the conclusion of the 13th season of Ranked, and we're just going to look at a couple different things that we learned from this season of Tier 9 gameplay. It's an interesting season because this is one of the first seasons in a long time where I feel that Destroyers were able to be used to their full capabilities. It's really hard for that to happen. Obviously, aircraft carriers not being included has helped. Overall, I just think there's a lot of newer destroyers out there that just really got some good use. So let's talk about some stats overall from this season. And congratulations to you if you did rank out. If you didn't, I'm sure you had a good reason why you didn't. Maybe you're like me and you're just time pressed and just can't rank out ever. And if you make it to rank five, you're completely happy with that. I know not all of us are in it to get to rank one. Some of us just like something different every now and then. So let's talk about the ships and how I feel they did and how they statistically did. Not surprisingly to me, the best ship overall with a win rate of 54.82% was the Mogador. And this was the ship that I favored for the majority of rank gameplay, even though I made it to rank seven slash eight-ish. When I switched to the Mogador, I got on a tear. My, my win rate in the Mogador was probably about 95%. I probably got about 12 rounds in it, and I think I maybe only lost one or two, if even. I feel like if I had the time, I could have definitely gotten to rank one in this ship. And a lot of people that played this obviously felt the same because they had a very good win rate in the ship. Now, average damage wasn't as high as any of the other ships. You're only looking at 44,474. It's not great, but it's not horrible. What this tells me is that the Mogador had a very specific and special role. It was very good at capping. It was very good at flanking, getting around the enemy, and just absolutely pelting them, causing pure mayhem. That's what I think the Mogador excelled at absolute mayhem. And right behind the Mogador, this one being somewhat of a surprise to me, was the Neustra Shimmy with a win rate of 54.69%. Even less damage than the Mogador at 40,000 average damage, but again, it did good. Now, the downside of these two ships was the overall popularity of them. Mogador only had 1.7% popularity, and Neustra Shimmy even less than that at 0.3%. So what this tells me is, not a lot of players were playing these ships, but the ones that did were good at these ships, and they absolutely knew what they were doing in these ships. And that's why you see such a high win rate. I think a lot of skilled players were taking these two ships out. Two ships behind that were the Kronstadt and the Alaska, two cruisers and two very beefy tanky cruisers at that. Popularity on them was 5.5% for the Alaska and 2.3% for the Kronstadt. Average damage for both were almost identical, right about 57,000 on average. Behind those ships, you've got Azuma, Jutland, Musashi, Georgia, Black, and Kitakaze rounding out what I consider to be the best ships of this past season. 
All of those ships finished above 52% with Kitakaze at the very tail edge of that. Kitakaze probably by far the most popular destroyer of the season. In fact, it might have been the most popular ship in general of this rank season. And just looking through the stats does confirm that 10.9% popularity. Essentially one in 10 players played this ship. The other most popular ships are Musashi. Jean Bart was a favorite as well. Barely eked across the 50% line though, though it did have a high average damage of 77,000. And I think the reason for that is a lot more players had Jean Bart and a lot more average players as well. So that's probably why you see the Jean Bart kind of fall to the very middle of the pack, even though it is a very, very powerful battleship. On the low side of things, Actually, win percentage wise, Azuma was the absolute worst ship this season with 44.43%. Only 1% of players opted to play this ship and it had an average damage of 59,000, which is somewhat low for a battleship. Of course, can't say much else for Iowa either because it finished pretty low as well, third from the bottom with Lion. Surprisingly, a very popular destroyer, the Fletcher, finished towards the bottom as well with a 48% win rate, only doing 34,000 damage, and it had a 6.4% popularity. I attribute this gameplay to the fact that almost everyone in their dog has a Fletcher at this point, and I still believe it's a very, very good destroyer. It's just everyone has it, all players for the most part of all skill levels. Surprising to me is the fact that Ibuki did not finish at the bottom, though it did have a 48% win rate. I am a little surprised that the St. Louis did as bad as it did. That was sub 50%. And then you've got the middle of the pack ships like the Rune, the Z46, the Dimitri Donskoy, Udaloy, FDG. The, the DeGroza actually did better than I thought it would. Finished almost right at 50% with a 3.5% popularity and 63,000 average damage. Benham, surprisingly, did a little below 50%, and it had a pretty high popularity at 3.7%. I think we can attribute that to the fact that its torpedoes were a little shorter than others, and players tended to play it a little more aggressively, getting destroyed a little easier than other ships. This season, at least in North America, players overwhelmingly preferred the United States, 37% of all rounds were played in USN ships. Right behind that was Japan at 26%, followed by France at 13%, and then USSR and Germany and UK were tied at 8%. Warship types, destroyers actually led the pack this season. 40% of players decided to play destroyers, and I think you can overwhelmingly thank the Kitakaze for that. Kitakaze was obviously a huge factor in that, at 10% of all battles being played in it. That is actually astronomically high compared to all the other ships, with the exception of the Musashi, which was at 8%. Cruisers got the smallest share of the pie this time, 22%. And really, why would you want a cruiser at this level when you've got battleships that are good, like the Musashi, and you've got those very powerful cruisers like Alaska and Azuma, and I know those are counted as actual cruisers, but I just don't think anyone really had the heart to play Seattle. I mean, really, who would want to get stuck in a Seattle? I know players played it because it had a 2.2% popularity, but it was not an optimal choice, nor was the Buffalo. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is your Season 13 Ranked Gameplay Roundup Tier 9. A lot of interesting ships this round, some very good ships as well. Mogador, very, very surprising to some, not to me, though I feel that Mogador is a much better ship in ranked gameplay than it is in just straight up random battles. It's the odd ship that excels in that role, but not the other. I think many players, if they were to take the Mogador in just straight up regular gameplay, they wouldn't do as good as they did in ranked, or at least I don't. Anyhow, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming out again. Check out my other channel, AstroZoop. Again, link in the description of this video. It's great to be back, though it's short-lived because I gotta go up to Schenectady, New York for an entire week's worth of 
reserve duty. So that will be starting Friday, though I will have sparse content next week. I hope to get out a review of the Friesland on Monday. I know a lot of you are interested in that ship. And if you are, please feel free to check out my preview of that ship. Not too much has changed since that's come out, though the limiting factor for the ship is the fact that there's not a lot of aircraft carriers out there anymore, and the ship was built for the purpose of taking out aircraft. Anyhow, like I said, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later. Zoop out.